When I reviewed the Dreamy H14, the non-pro version, a couple months back, I was disappointed that Dreamy decided to remove some of the features that I've come to expect from Wet n Dry vacuums. With H14 Pro, they've added those back, but in some cases, not in a great way. Let's find out more. Now, before we start the review, let me tell you what a Wet n Dry vacuum is, and if you're familiar with what that is, feel free to use the chapter selectors to skip this part. So essentially what a Wet n Dry vacuum is, as the name suggests, it's a vacuum that does dry vacuuming, so just like a regular vacuum cleaner, but also at the same time, it's mopping your floors, and it's done via a brush that's rotating constantly and being fed with fresh water from a fresh water tank, and then the vacuum is sucking out all the dirt, the debris, and the dirty water, and the depositing that in a dirty water tank. The advantage of using a wet and dry vacuum is, of course, you don't have to first vacuum the dust off of your floor and then mop. You do it at the same time, kind of a two-in-one thing. But of course, with a mop and bucket, it's a tedious task. At some point, the mop gets dirty and you're just simply dragging dirt across your floor. And then you have to clean the mop, clean the water, etc. With a wet and dry vacuum, as the Fresh water and the dirty water never mix. You're always cleaning with fresh water. The added advantage, of course, if you have spills or anything like milk and cereal, any messes on the floor, you can use a wet and dry vacuum, as we will see in the cleaning tests later in the video. So let's talk about the H14 Pro and what sets it apart from the H14, but also potentially other players in the market. So for starters, the machine has 180 degree lay flat capability, so you can actually lay it flat and go under furniture, under chairs, which is great. The machine machine also has LED lights on the cleaning head and self-propelled wheels, which help propel the machine or easily push the machine forward and backward when you use it, both of which were missing from the H14 non-pro version. They've also added what they call smart ratio cleaning solution, and that's a tank which you fill with cleaning solution, and it automatically mixes that with the water. Instead of you figuring out the ratios, the proportions, and every time you fill the clean water tank, you just add that cleaning solution, and this is a great time saver. I only wish refilling this was easier. It's an awkward position. We've put it, and uh, you need to kind of lay the machine flat to be able to fill the tank. You do have a switch that you can toggle on and off uh, to activate the solution or turn it off in case you want to clean without it. One of the things I was also disappointed to see missing from the H14 uh, was the max or turbo mode. So we've got the automatic mode which uses sensor to detect how much dirt, debris, mess there is and, and accordingly adjust the suction power and the water level, uh, which is great, but sometimes you want to manually kick the machine into higher power which was impossible with the H14, and that was one of my main points against it. Now, the H14 Pro still has the same three modes, automatic, suction only, which does not distribute any water and just used to suck water or messes out of the floor, and ultra mode, which uses electrolyzed water, in theory, to disinfect. I have questions about the legitimacy of the disinfecting power in such vacuums because I, I can't comment on how effective it is. Also, if the electrolyzed water is in contact with the floor for long enough to actually yield any disinfecting benefits. That aside, the H14 Pro has those three modes, but then adds a custom mode, which you can configure in the app uh, and set different parameters. And you can choose between two modes, which are quiet mode, which uses less power and makes less noise, or max mode. So while this was great, and I'm happy to see that we now have the option to have have max mode or turbo mode. I'm kind of disappointed in their implementation because they kind of force you to choose between quiet mode or max mode. What if I want both? Why not let us cycle through all the available modes? Now, in theory, you still can use both modes, but then if you want to use quiet mode, you have to grab your phone, get into the phone, change the custom mode into quiet mode, and then trigger that, which is way too tedious. Just let us cycle through all the available modes. Why are you forcing us to pick between this or that. The other main negative thing I had about the H14 was the fact that you cannot manually start the brush drying process. So once you're done cleaning, you put the machine back on the base, it cleans the brush roll for a couple of minutes, and then it starts a drying process. And here you have the option of selecting either a silent drying mode, which takes an hour and makes very little noise, or a super fast drying mode that takes five minutes. Of course, that one is loud, but then in, in five minutes, it's done. Uh, so on the H14, there was no way to manually only start the drying mode. If you wanted to get to the drying mode, you had to actually clean the brushes for a couple of minutes and then start the drying mode, which I had an issue with because sometimes I just want to dry the brush roll. And imagine you just spilled water on the floor, use the suction mode, the brush is now wet, but it's not really dirty, and you just want to dry it. You could not. You had to go through a couple of minutes of the brush cleaning cycle before you can get to the drying part. With the H14 Pro, you now can 
But again, in my opinion, poorly implemented because the only way you can get to that is via the app on the phone. With all other machines on the market, you can simply press a button on the machine itself or hold and press the cleaning button and it's gonna trigger the drying mode. For some weird reason, with Dreamy you cannot, you have to go into your phone, the app, and then start the drying mode. So again, happy that they give us the option, but not too happy with how they decided to implement that. So the machine is easy to move around, especially with the self-propulsion wheels, but it's a tad bit on the heavier side, just compared to others I've tried. And also I found the head does not pivot too much left and right. As you can see, it's somewhat limited in how much it, uh, it pivots. So overall, not a terrible experience, but not the best experience maneuvering the machine. The machine also has a special comb tooth scraper to help minimize the amount of tangled hair on the brush roll, and we'll see that in the cleaning test in just a few moments. But before we get to that, let me show you the app and what you can do with the app. So when you launch the app, you're gonna see the battery percentage and right on top, there are two quick buttons to start the cleaning process, but also the drying process. Now my problem here with their implementation again is that you cannot choose or easily choose if you want the silent drying or the fast drying. It would have made more sense if they gave us the option right from that screen uh, to pick which one we want. You can change the option, but look how many clicks it's gonna take. You have to go to the device first and then go to wash and dry and then go to drying mode and then change it from super speed mode to quiet mode, click confirm, and then go back here and click start drying. Quiet. So that, in my opinion, is way too many steps, way too many clicks. Uh, it would have made sense if they just had uh, two options, silent drying or fast drying right from that screen. But then here is also where you can turn on or off the custom mode. So if you turn it on, you can select, do you want it to be quiet mode, turbo mode? And again, they're forcing us to choose between this and that. Just give us both. But then you can also uh, have a personalized mode which then you can select the suction power out of three different ones, soft, standard, or strong, and then the water level from daily, which is less water, to wet, which is more water, and then you can also toggle on or off if you want to prepare electrolyzed water or not. There's not much more you can do in the app. You can go to the device settings over here uh, to change the uh, proportion of the solution that is mixed in with the water. You can select smart proportioning, which adjusts based on the same condition. To be honest, I don't know how effective that would be, or if you just want a powerful thing removal, so a high concentration ratio, then you simply click that. And one last thing you can adjust is the self-propulsion force, so uh, how powerful the wheels are moving forward from soft, balanced to strong. Now let's start with the cleaning test, starting off with the coffee stain test. I put some coffee on the floor and I let it dry over 12 hours. And as you can see, uh, with the first pass, the machine gets almost all of the coffee stain out. I let the coffee get near to the edge to test the edge cleaning capability. And as you can see, the machine got close to the edge, but not as close as I would have liked. Uh, we're at about 1.4 centimeters from the edge, which is not bad, but I've, I've seen better machines getting uh, closer to the edges. Next up is the ketchup test, and this one is a stress test because I let the ketchup dry out over 12 hours and as you may know this is a very tough stain to get out. The machine while it took a lot of passes to get it out eventually did get the ketchup stain out. Now you're more likely to encounter a fresh ketchup stain like this one and uh, with that stain as you can see from the first pass it gets everything out with absolutely no issue. Next up cereal and milk again absolutely no issue first pass it gets the larger chunks of cereal out and the milk uh, very easily. Once done, uh, opening up the dirty water tank, and as you can see, there's a filter to catch the solid debris. It doesn't do a great job at catching the solid debris. However, it's designed in a way where you can pour in all the liquid into it, and then it's gonna catch them, so I guess it works. And this is what the brush roll looked like after all these cleaning tests. As you can see, it's stained red from the ketchup. So now let's put the machine back on its base and run the brush cleaning cycle. This is gonna last up to five minutes and it's gonna clean the brush roll. And after that cycle was done, this is how much water was extracted from the brush roll. So all this dirty water came from the brush roll. And then this is what the brush roll looked like after the cleaning cycle. I did a fairly good job, not the best that I've seen, but fairly good. Uh, there's 
significantly less red staining from the ketchup. After that, I put the machine back on the base and started the brush drying cycle. And here you have the option between the fast cycle that takes five minutes, but is significantly loud at around 65 decibels, or the one hour silent cycle that's at about 40 decibels, which is fairly silent. In both cases, whichever drying method you use, um, the brush roll came out almost entirely dry. So that was really good to see. Lastly, I did a test to see the anti-hair tangle capabilities of the machine. I put some pink hair on the floor so you can easily spot it. And I was slightly disappointed as there was a lot of hair stuck to the machine. However, reading the product page, it seemed like the anti-tangling effect happens when you put the machine back on the base and let it clean itself. And this is where it can detangle the hair. So I did that uh, and the results were better, but I expected less hair to be tangled. As you can see, there was significant amount of hair still tangled on the brush row. So, would I recommend the H14 Pro? Uh, to be honest, I think it has a lot of potential, but there's a few near misses in my opinion where there's questionable design decisions, whether it's in how you pour in the solution to the fact that uh, you cannot start the drying process from the machine itself. And if you want to do it through the app, you have to go through multiple, let's say, clicks to choose between the silent and the uh, super fast drying method. And then the fact that you cannot constantly have a choice between the quiet mode and the turbo mode you have to pick one or the other again they might be small things but it's just that attention to detail that i would expect from a machine priced at this price point which retails for 700 dollars now i've seen it go for a bit less but at 700 dollars i would expect more attention to detail i'd expect better design decisions. There's a lot of potential in the machine. It cleans really well. It's easy to maneuver and push around. It has a lot of functions and it does a job. But at $700, I think there are better options out there, possibly even cheaper ones. Uh, now, if you're interested in buying a wet and dry vacuum, I'll be working on a comparison video comparing a bunch of different ones in the market and giving my thoughts, my recommendations on which one to choose. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel to get notified when I finally release that video. That's it for me. I'll put links in the description to the product page of the H14 Pro. Make sure to check that out to see the price at the moment you're watching this review. And if you do decide to purchase this, I would appreciate if you'd go through the links. These are affiliate links. I may earn a commission with some purchases at absolutely no extra cost to you, but this will greatly help support the channel. If you like the video, please hit the like button and consider subscribing to my channel as this encourages me to continue producing content. Until next time, cheers.